Hi guys, so today I want to try out the new um, auto ship for Crafters Companion Year of Craft. Um, it was something that you could sign up for when the auto ship came out for the Year of Craft. <laughs> and then it, it was with the MIDI option or just by itself or however, but this is the second one. I think they're going to try to get back on track. It got totally off track uh, with the first one. It came out like four months later instead of the two months like they did over two months. So this is auto ship two. I already unboxed it when it came in because I wasn't aware that it was being delivered. I was like, oh, cool. So I unboxed this during a haul video, but let me open it up. We'll look at it real quickly again and we'll try it out. So, um, yeah, there's no way of getting into this now unless they bring back some extras or something like that. I, I don't know if they'll do that. Let me open that window. It's just, it's getting hot. Oh, <laughs> it's so funny. We had a, a heat advisory for San Diego County. I told my mom and it was basically 80 degrees, 82 degrees. And they're like, heat advisory. <laughs> But for some people who live more inland, it might be in the 90s or even 100. So that's what they're advising. I think it wasn't so much for me, even though it is hot right now. Um, either way, uh, I don't want to open that window. So we're just going to deal with the lighting that I have going right now. Um, so this one's called The Gift of Giving. I don't even know if I mentioned that in the last video. Super cute. Uh, I know there's some templates in here and things like that. I don't know that I want to mess with templates today. I, of course, this doesn't want to come off. Hold on. Okay, this is going to take me a second. I'll be right back to remove this piece. Okay. So. Open that up. Oh, you know what I noticed? These are having the plastic packaging. I know somebody had said that they weren't going to do the plastic packaging anymore, which I didn't hear anything about that. I just know with the sub boxes, they started using paper and it looked really cute. But here we are. Um... So this is issue two. What happens is there's a binder, and it's actually behind me here, um, that you're going to take your little year of craft pieces and put it into that binder. So it's like a whole series of magazines, basically. And they're going to tell you exactly what to do to make things that are in here. Oh, the little bag. I know there's a template for those things. I'm talking about how to address things. You brighten my day card. That's sweet. Um, a little origami here to make the little shirt. It's Father's Day stuff. So it, it just kind of reads like a magazine. And then, you know, you can pick whatever you want to do. Oh, that's so cute. Now, I'm looking at this umbrella thing. I'm like, I need to do the umbrella. This was kind of fun. Maybe we'll do that. Get a little messy. There'll be something different. I usually get to do the die cutting or whatever is involved in here. So let's, let's, let's try that one. We'll see. <laughs> um, again, it comes with ribbon, it has a cute little banner, it has the dies, so that's good. And I don't have to fussy cut that, which we already saw in the unboxing. Uh, lots of sentiment stamps and whatnot here. I'm going to hold it up like this, which I already did in the unboxing. We have our envelopes, we have our card blanks, again, 4 by 6 6 inch square, and 5 by 7 stencils, so I'm using that today. Um, lots of templates, and you know, I didn't open this up completely last time, so let me open it now. I already went through all the paper, and of course we're going to pick some for the pro project here, but I guess this is the address thing that if you saw, there was something, a guide there about addressing stuff. Um, cute little kind of label tag kind of thing. A little envelope. Oh, I like this little envelope. It looks like one of those little money envelopes or something, you know, because it's going to fold over this way, and then this is the top flap. Cute. Another one of these guys. Um, oh, interesting. This looks like a binding thing, doesn't it? It kind of looks like the one from the Precious Memories or Precious Moments. I know they kept changing the name on that one with uh, Crafts Companion, but it looks like the spine for that. I'm assuming this also goes in with that, like to make a little book. Kind of what it looks like. We have the little template to make that um, gift card holder or card holder. I don't know if you saw it when I was flipping through. It showed like to one dinner out or whatever. It was like a coupon ticket holder. Oh, a step card. This is interesting. I'd rather do this probably a different way, but I like that we have this here and then some of these need to be popped out, but that's pretty cool. I've never really seen a template for a step card. Again, you can run these through your machine with your paper, with the embossing uh, rubber thing, so it pushes the lines into your paper. It's not gonna be that great, but it's a pretty good thing, and then you can go from there. And then this is a nice size bag, right? I mean, look at that. Do you need two of those? Make your little bag. Okay. Um, and then it had some kind of words and stuff, some of our papers that I thought were really pretty if you saw the unboxing. So I'm going to need this, clearly. Um, I think I don't need any of these other things for this pro project. So what I'm going to do is read through here. 
Uh, use a rainbow sen raindrop stencil with art liner pen to trace a selection of raindrops onto the watercolor card. Ensure you trace the raindrops of different sizes. Paint each trace raindrop with drawing gum. Ugh, I don't have that stuff. So that's a drawback already. What <laughs> I'm gonna do? Oh, that's kind of a pain. Well, I'm not gonna do that. Use waterproof ink to stamp. Actually, I think no, I don't have any of that gum stuff. I was like, do I have some? Use waterproof ink to stamp send my pretty across. Okay, well, what we're going to do is we're going to use gum. We're going to use embossing powder, which was not what I wanted to do. But you know what? We can still do it that way. So let me think about how this is going to work. I will okay, be right back. So I have some watercolor paper here actually from another sub box that a lot of times what happens is I get them, if I get them for like a good price, I deconstruct them, maybe de-stash or give away the stamps and the dyes, but I keep the other things that you can use up. So this is kind of a beige color. This is Crafts and Payne cardstock, watercolor card. It's smoother on one side than it is on the other, so I think I'm going to use the side that's a little smoother. And somebody asked me about this, and I am already in love with this Tim Holtz cutter. Oh my gosh. They do have a bigger one. So somebody else had mentioned, they're like, oh, it's kind of bummer that you have to bring this out every time. And it's it's meant as an extra because this is their like smaller cutter. And then they have the big boy, right? The one that's... So it's just like an extra added feature. It's not really because you're going to use it all the time. I mean, that's not what it's intended for. You know what I'm saying? Like this one's less expensive, a little smaller. It gives you that for an added feature, but it's not really meant like that's the drawing point to this. Yeah, otherwise, you'd get the big guy. I love how... I mean, look at that. And it just stays. <laughs> That's the big drawing point for me. And it just feels really nice and firm. And of course, I've only had it for, you know, a little while. So we'll keep an eye out. But uh, for now, it's pretty good. So it says to use a three and three quarter by five and three quarter piece of watercolor card. So three and three quarter. So basically, we're going to put this on the four by six card. Piece by five and three quarters. And I do have, which is funny, their art liner pens. I do not know where they are. Well, I kind of know where they are. I don't want to go fish them out for this is all I'm trying to say. So I'm just going to use what I have. Um, I'm going to use just regular Pigma Micron pens. Um, and of course, these are all different widths, which I don't really care about, but I think that's good. Okay. And it says, use the raindrop stencil with art liner pen to trace a selection of raindrops onto your watercolor card. Ensure you trace raindrops of different sizes. Paint each traced raindrop with drying gum. So instead of doing that, I'm going to add um, clear embossing powder, I guess. Again, this paper's kind of yellowish. It's weird. Okay, I'm going to put this on here. Now, since I have to do it the way I'm going to do it, the raindrops are definitely going to be odd. So I'm going to start up here, actually. And I'll have to line it up and then I'll have to redo it. So let's just say, and then she even did them kind of at an angle, which looks really cute, but you know what? We're not going to complicate matters. So I'm just going to go around. So when I come back later with the um, embossing powder, I don't have to, I'm not messing with this. Because if you look at this little picture, hold on, let's put another one here. Oh, that's kind of a mess. That was probably not the best idea. Oh, well that one because it's just kind of weird um they did it randomly because you can come back in with your little gum and do whatever you like but we can't really do that since i don't have the gum stuff i have to do mine a little bit different so i'm going to put one there and then i'm going to bring this down and use the smaller drops here and just start putting in maybe some of these this is going to be a nightmare <laughs> And I'll tell you why. Because when I go to add, I'm going to dauber it really carefully. Ugh, what a bummer. So I'll just put some more over here then. Just for fun. This is not going to be easy, guys. So I am going to get a dauber. I think I already used one of these daubers for clear embossing powder before, but that's okay. I'm gonna get some clear embossing powder. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, where are we at? Nope, not that. There we go. 
So I'm going to try to do this the best way I can. I don't know if it's going to work out, but okay. So these two, right? We just did those two. I'm going to get into my clear embossing powder and just try to put it there. And just try to put it there. And try not to smear when I move this around. Do I remember where I got these other drops from? No, I don't. But that's pretty close. <laughs> so let's do that. Again, I'm just trying to put it in those spots. Is this spot about the same? That's about the same size. I'm not too worried about it. I'm just trying to put this stuff on here. Okay. And then like this guy, that's about the same size. And that one. I'm looking at the size now. I'm not really looking at the pattern because that doesn't matter. I'm trying to mess the other ones up. Did I already put some there? And maybe this one. We'll try to do our best. And this one's going to be a mess. I probably use the driest embossing powder, <laughs> embossing ink that I have too. This is not good. Hopefully it holds on. I remember not being too impressed with the Crafters Companion embossing ink. So, why did I grab that? I don't know. Okay, so we have that and then we need some clear embossing powder and um, this guy. And hopefully this will work for us. It looks like I can see it. I might have missed a spot or two. Oh well. <laughs> okay, I can see where it's sticking. Good, good, good. I suppose if it doesn't stick and you notice that. I should have used my embossed spaghetti, yes, but I was already too distracted by what all I had to do here to make this work. Um, where is my little hair? So I can see there's powder where I don't want it, so I'm going to do that. Just... Give it a little brushing. These are some Arteza, um, actually they're erasers that I love. And they remind me of the erasers they used to have back in the day for typewriters. You'd erase and brush away. Anyway, I think this might work guys, we will see. And the reason I'm using the Pigma Micron pens is because they are archival quality, so they should not smear. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And did I unplug this? Oh, good. Okay, so we are going to just keep that up. And again with this, once it changes, move away. Okay, and I'll just keep going through. It's hard to tell on this. And I'll be back with a big piece of paper and I still got... Way too close to my hand. Oh, that, that was hot. Okay, rinse this off because otherwise you have little watermark stuff. I should mark this. You know what? Ooh, I'm going to label it with my little Munbean label just on this one because it does have stuff on it and I want to use it for next time. All right, I will do that. All right, what else are we supposed to do now? Um, that was number one. Number two, use waterproof ink to stamp the sentiment repeatedly across the piece from step one. Only rink the stamp after a couple of impressions. So, sentiment. You can't make rainbows without a little rain is the sentiment we're going to grab. So, I'm saying that last time I made uh, the card or whatever project I made with the first auto ship, um, it was basically asking for everything from the initial box. So, this is good that I'm actually using this stuff in here. You can't make a rainbow without a little rain. Is that the one? So cute. Also, you can just use this. If you want the same look, you can use this, ink it up with your watermark ink or your um, embossing ink, and um, and use that, because it's about the same kind of look, you know? I just use the stencil, and that's fine. Okay. I'm standing up this whole time. I don't know why, but that's sometimes that's what happens. It says to use waterproof ink. I have alcohol-proof ink. I have hybrid inks, of course. Um... I'm going to use my squid ink, which is a hybrid ink. Ugh. Tell you that. Okay. I was thinking about putting this on my um, tonic magnetic mat just to hold it down while I stamp, but it should be okay. All right, we have this. 
I have a block, and people ask me sometimes where I get my blocks. These are really old blocks I've had forever from close to my heart. So there it is. Okay. Supposedly, I'm just going to do this, and I'm just eyeballing this, I guess. That looks kind of messy. I don't really, I don't know if I care for that. <laughs> I'm going to stamp down here real quick, and then back up here, and then maybe in here. That's what it says. <laughs> I know it says to stamp it every few, but... Oh, that one's crooked in a way that I don't like, but oh well. What are you going to do? <laughs> it's cute. It's different. And since this top one is already dark, I'm going to stamp off on the side and make it look a little more organic. All right. And then down here. I guess. <laughs> there we are. And I'm going to carefully... See that ink right there? If I rub it, it's going to smear into the area that isn't protected. So I'm going to try to just pick it up without smearing it too much. Does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? It's very possible that if you just smear it off, it's going to go in there. So I'm just picking off that little bit. Uh, right here is a little bit on that W. It doesn't say anything about this, but I just feel like that's what I should do. Okay, I guess we're good. I mean, that's good for me. Um, and then what? <laughs> Only reading the stamp after whatever to look for a faded. Follow the background technique described on page 24. This one here, aqua markers. Mm, I'm just going to use watercolors because I don't really feel like pulling out my aqua markers. But if you want to, you just do that. You put them on something glassy and just go with it. But I'm going to get um, watercolors. I'll be right back. Okay. So, yes, I've changed to another <laughs> background. Um, and they're doing like a rainbow red, orange, yellow, you know, going through there. So let me see. That's a very interesting red. Um, again, I need a scrap of paper. That's pinky. Which one's more red? Oh, whatever. We'll go with this. And I'm just going to use the water brush. So I'm squeezing plenty of water because we're doing like a wash, it seems like. Red. Let's go with orange. <laughs> that orange is not the best orange in the world. That's okay. Yellow. Um, let's get some of this green. It's like repelling the water. Very weird paper. <laughs> Do you see that? It's like, nope. Um, blue. And yeah, let's go with this purple down here. Very much lighter than I wanted, so let's go back. Okay, that's soaking up a lot of water, and I'm going to hit it with a heat tool. And I guess that's good for that. All right, I'm going to hit it with a heat tool just to dry it, and I'll be right back. Okay, still a bit wet. Um, I try to keep the heat tool a little bit far up because it's going to redo this stuff, you know? Eh. And then it says now to go ahead and remove the gum if you're using that gum stuff and then to add glitter to these. And what's funny is I have clear embossing powder with glitter in it, but I didn't use that. So, oh, well, I'm going to leave it just the way it is a little bit artsy and just be done with that. Um, so I'm going to let this dry a little bit better. And I did turn it over on here before I clean this off because I do silly things sometimes. And so I got some purple there, but what are you going to do? Okay. Um, it says now to go ahead and layer that onto a bright blue cardstock and fix it to your 4x6 card front. It doesn't say how big your bright blue cardstock should be, but if this is 5 and 3 quarters by 3 and 3 quarters, then the cardstock should probably be 
Uh, three and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. So I'll be right back. I'm gonna cut down a piece of blue cardstock. I'm assuming it's in the kit and then get the card base and then we're gonna top okay, it off. So I am assuming this is the bright blue because there's other blues in here, but they're much lighter. Um, I could also look in the, the first iteration of this box, but um, like there's, that's very light. That one's kind of like more dusty. So that's the brightest one, that's what I chose. Again, we can go back into the kit, the original kit, and maybe there's something different there, but... Okay, card base, four by six. This again, five and seven eighths by three and seven eighths. And then our other topper that we just made. And then we're just gonna stamp some uh, umbrellas. It says to make four of them, so we'll see what that's about. Stamp four umbrellas with waterproof ink onto watercolor card. Follow the direct coloring technique described on page 24 to color them. Once dry, die cut two of them. Cut the top of the others. Use three foam pads to fix the umbrella tops to the die cut umbrellas. Interesting. I have no idea what they mean by that. I'll have to read that again. All right. This might even still be a little bit wet, but I do like to use a wet glue or something like this because I want it to get into every nook and cranny. I've already made videos about this, like using Crafters Companion watercolor card. There are some that I really like and some that are just horrible. And so I don't know what was in this kit. It's okay. It was just kind of repelling the water, but I was also working on the opposite side. That shouldn't make a difference, but maybe it did. Anyhow, I'm going to hold this down and put a weight on it just to keep it flat, especially because of that water coloring. I'm going to see about stamping what I can on this piece of watercolor card that I have left. I think it'll work, right? Because this is what I have left, and I think it'll be plenty to stamp four of the umbrella. Okay, but I'll be right yeah, back. I was going to have them stamp, but I'm going to show you. I'm going to use my stamping tool because... Again, watercolor paper has texture and sometimes you want to stamp it a couple times or whatever it is. So I'm just going to take this and stamp it four times in different spots. I'm trying to see if I can get them all on here. If I do one, two, eh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get them all. Would it be better this way? Nah. Okay, we'll see if we can get them all on here, but I'm sure we can mess with it. And also, I don't know where the die ends and starts, so... You know. All right, let's get this on here. Waterproof ink. Again, you can color this however you like. You don't have to use water colors or markers. And the next one they're using their aqua markers, and I'm just going to use my Arteza markers um, to do the same kind of technique. Why is that not getting on there? The handle. There we go. Oh. You know, I don't use this often enough to remember to use these extra little tools. <laughs> but there we go. Hey, pretty good. Okay. I'm going to try to put another one here. Ugh. For this to work, I'm going to have to, like, clean this off. Because if I do it and it's not what I want, it is going to not look great. Actually, you know what? Should I cheat a little bit? Because we only need two of the tops on one of them. We don't need the whole thing. Eey. Okay. I'm going to eyeball this completely and see if it works out <laughs> where I want to put it. I want to put it like right in here. We'll see what that looks like, if it works. And then if not, we'll... Oh, what am I doing? Will that stamp there? Oh, that's almost perfect. But I need to move over like a... Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, I can even bring it down a little bit, too. Okay, I'm just trying to be tight. Uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, <laughs> let's ink this one up. And I'm going to ink two more, and it's probably not going to be a pretty sight, and maybe it's a bad idea. So are those two. And what I'm thinking about is putting another one down here. Oh, my gosh. I really only need the tops on a couple. See, that, that would have been on my paper. Okay. 
Yep, that'll work. And then one more that, I don't know. Actually, I have more of the, this little piece right here. Awesome, so I'll stamp that, and then this little piece is probably enough just to get the one, the top, because we are gonna cut the top off of two of them anyway. So that's kind of why I don't really. It's kind of fun getting a little messy. Oopsie, my paper moved, but you know what? That's kind of a bummer, actually. <laughs> oh well, I'm gonna go with it. All right, there's that one. And then this guy, I'm just gonna, again, stamp just the top. So I'll rearrange it so the top stamps right here, and I'll be right back. I just put this in the exact same spot where that inky was. All right, guys. So, we had to cut the tops off of two, but since I already cut this off, this has to be the one that's gonna be on top. So that's why I was like, yeah, that's kind of a bummer. But if you look at the example, they pretty much didn't cut anything on, on par here. Like, look at the little, those little black knobs are cut off here, cut off here, cut off here. <laughs> it's way off. So I have a feeling ours is gonna be very similar to that. Um, and that's fine. So I have Martiza inks here, or uh, real brush pens, and I guess I'm just gonna go for it. So, they put like a little bit of red up here. So on page 24, they talk about doing a little bit of this kind of thing. And I'm just gonna take a water brush, is it ready? And bring down some of that paint, that ink. And they're leaving like a little area lighter. It's kind of a lot of an area to leave lighter, but okay. All right, that's kind of a lot, hold on. Add a little bit more. And we're gonna do this to all four. Now, some are gonna be underneath, and I would honestly just not paint it, but they're painting there, so I'm gonna do it the way that they did it. And then the orange. I just added a little bit more. I haven't used my Arteza brushes in a while. I love them. It's kind of light colored. You can always add more. It's just like watercoloring, so you can just build it up. It's Nothing to be afraid of. And they have yellow on both sides of this for some reason. <laughs> Again, if you're not sure you know what to do, I just copy the example. So their example has all this going on. And I'll do the same thing for all of the umbrella pieces. I don't really like that shadow or that light look in the middle. It's not my favorite. I'm gonna see if I can go over a little bit. Okay, and then we have green. Oopsie. Green here and green here. Oopsie, not green there. Oh well. <laughs> Let me try to push it back to where that belongs. Okay, and bring that in. Probably gonna go over it with a second coat because this is very light. Now this is the one that's gonna go underneath actually, so Honestly, I should, probably shouldn't even take the time to like, oh, try to, it's gonna be covered up by this guy. So really do your best on the ones that you're gonna cut out and only use the top part of, is what I would recommend. And then we have blue. It's kind of purpley, but that's really pretty. Okay, so I'll do that and then a little red handle, I suppose. I'm gonna put the ink all here. You can do this with your, um, any water-based ink. I mean, maybe people even use Crayolas. Um, but like your diamond press ones, all those. Anything that's water-based like this, you can use in the same way. All right, I'm gonna color the other three. I'll be back. That's finished up. That took a few minutes. I'm going to hit it with my heat tool because I wanna get to cutting them. I am also going to take the die in the meantime. Oopsie, I just finished. I just realized I didn't finish the red handles just on this one. Um, I'm gonna take the die and make an aperture. So I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of paper and cut this out on it, just so I can make sure. This is the thing. That um, stamp, you know, it might have moved, so this might not even be like ready to cut the thing right. So what I'm gonna do is focus on this really more than the top, because the top is gonna be covered by the other one anyway. I'll talk about that in just a minute, but I'm going to make an aperture. So I will be right back. Use a newer-ish folder, see how that works out. I'm gonna run this through again, it's just to make an aperture. So it's just a scrap piece of paper with that on there. Sorry, I don't wanna shake the camera, but it might shake. <laughs> and then we're gonna need our pieces. So I cut that literally just so I can get this from it. 
this right here. Boom. So that made a little aperture for us. And I'm gonna trim away some of this, leaving plenty of room, hopefully. For the dies. All right. Now, let's see, I may have to trim this down. Just so it fits through the marquee. And I'm gonna look through this, not bad. Look at that, not bad. I don't know if you can see, I can see everything here. I can see that this is a little bit off at the very top, but the handle is what I really wanna focus on, okay? And again, reason being is I want the handle to be cut nicely on the bottom and on the top, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna cut that from the ones that we don't have bottoms on. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, this is a bummer. I do not want to do this, but I really don't want this to move. So I'm gonna put a little bit of tape closer to that. Holding onto my paper, hopefully it doesn't move. I know the handle wasn't perfect, but that was pretty spot on. Oh, it looks like I might've moved a little bit. And just doing this very carefully because the paper might still be weak under the water coloring. So as you can see, this is not quite there, but this is better. Not great. So what I should have done with the, I didn't realize this had a weird curve to it. Um, I might just trim that off. But do you see what I'm saying? So when you go to stamp next time, just kind of make sure that the stamp itself is doing a, a nice job. But for now, what I'm going to do is just trim that off like this. And no one will ever know. I'm just kidding. Okay, so we have that. Um, and then for this next one, I'm just gonna show you for the one that's just the top is what I care about. I tore a little bit. I'm gonna line it up this way and really make sure that the top is looking good. And that's all I care about for this one. So that's pretty good right there. So scary. Flip this back, make sure this is in the right spot. And it goes to cut. I don't want that to move, so I'm gonna stick it there. And again, run this through. Okay, and I'll be back. Hey guys, unfortunately, this one was way off, like ridiculously off again. It's gonna go underneath, but um, yeah, just make sure your umbrella stick is straight. Look at that. I couldn't do any better. Now, of course, if I'm going to give this to somebody, I would redo it because that's, I mean, completely off and it wouldn't take too much longer just to make another one. But um, make sure your stamp is nice and straight. I mean, I could probably even fit another one in here and redo it, but that's okay. All right. And then we're supposed to adhere these. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, okay. We're supposed to keep the bottom of one. And then just use the top of the others. So I'm just gonna take this little piece off right here. Boom. And this guy, not only was he, uh, I didn't get that last little dot done, the paper ended. <laughs> I was like, oh no. So whatever, that's what it is. This is gonna go on top of this guy. And because of that, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drag in that. Where's my micron? Ooh. I'm gonna bring this down a little bit just to make it look more like that little black dot because when this one's on top it'll kind of help shadow that I messed up okay and then this guy will go on top of this one and that one looks pretty good okay so we're supposed to bring our card back stamp for umbrellas blah 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 once dry and to the top of the others this is the picture of what we're working on mine's quite a bit different as far as the coloring and all that. But of course, it's not gonna be the same. It's just not. And since the handle on this one's so wonky and ugly, we're gonna put that one in the back so that this covers it up. Yay! <laughs> all right. Um, I do not know how they got it to fit the way they're showing because that must be a very small strip, I guess, that's all. Okay. So let's glue these down. See, we can do some cover up. We can do a little operation here. So I'm gonna put this Down here somewhere, covering up all our little work. <laughs> it's like over here. Okay. I'm gonna hold that down for a minute. 
And then this one is going to go on top like this. Well, at least we were able to cover that up a little bit. So like that, because how else there's how skinny, how small is that? Maybe this needs to go over more that way. Well, it's handmade. It's not gonna be exactly the same. I'm gonna get some dimensional adhesives on the back of this little guy. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's cut a piece like this. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment, and then we're supposed to... Um... They didn't say what they did here, but I can see they scored it here and here, and they made it pop up a little bit. So we'll try and do that, even though the instructions don't really talk about that. So that's funny. I'm looking at their image, and since they had it all kind of not cut in the right spot. I have a feeling they don't know about the aperture trick <laughs> over there at Crafter's Companion, you know what I'm saying? Because these are all off, like completely off. <laughs> the little dots, they're just not even there, you know? You gotta do the aperture trick, guys, then look at I mean, all the dots are there, except for the one that I didn't, you know. Well, I won't talk about that. Okay, let's see here. I'll take a piece of this. It is kind of weird because the paper is kind of yellow. Like I said, it's kind of off-white, but that's just the color of that one. This is fun. Haven't gotten too messy in a while. Okay, before I really push down, I'm just kind of lining things up, making sure we're in the right spot. About there, about there. Cute. I think I did something like this with the diamond press video one time, remember? I cut the little, literally the same thing. And that was a long time ago, you guys. I don't know, I'm just saying. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was an umbrella and I did the same kind of, I popped up the top of it. Um, all right, there we go. And then we're gonna do our sentiment. Um, let me get a white piece of paper that I can stamp on. Oh, there's one right here. Look at that. Oh, this is good stamping paper too. Oh well. And then it's basically the same sentiment. So I'll take that and stamp it. And then I'm gonna just cut it with my guillotine I'll tell you the measurements once I do it because I'm not sure what I need to do. I don't want to get this too juicy. It doesn't look that great. And, you know, I'm barely trying to like kiss it to the paper. That's a little better. I will be right back. So I cut this down. It's about half an inch. Yeah, it's about half an inch. I would probably do half an inch. I would take a little bit more off this top part, but it was getting hard for me to get in there. Um, oof. So I do it with scissors, it's just not going to be straight. Um, so that's, I would like it smaller because it's going to go on here and it takes up some of the space and it covers up some of my work, you know, so that kind of is a bummer, but I will. And I'm going to score it on half an inch in on either side. So like here I'm going to score just about half an inch. And then here I'm going to score it just about half an inch. Eh, a little bit smaller than half an inch. And basically, we're going to fold that. So when we glue it down, this kind of makes a, bow, a little bow. It bows out a little bit. Just to make it look more like the picture, but like I said, they didn't mention anything about it. But you can tell that they did something like that here. You see how it has those score marks? And then it's kind of out. So that's what we're going to do. And this would be faster done with, you know, a dry adhesive, but... Um, oh, you know what? Let me try it. Oh, I re remember the other day I used this and it cut somewhere, like it totally ripped in half or ripped off. And all I did was open it up and rewind it um, so that I can keep using it. Um, somebody had asked if I will show how to re... Oops. <laughs> Stock your um, ATG. Um, I will try to do that soon. I forgot that I hadn't... Um, this all has sticky on it because I have to just let it go up, you know? So I forgot that I hadn't cut it yet. Okay. So I can do that. I mean, I'm sure there's tons of old, old videos on how to do that, but um, this is tricky because I don't know how much of this I want to pop this up. Let's say that goes there. I'm not pushing down real hard quite yet. And there. Okay. <laughs> kind of interesting. 
There it is, guys. That took longer than I thought, <laughs> honestly. Uh, really cute, though. Really fun. Um, again, it really reminds me of a card that I made not that long ago, anyhow. But um, I like the different looks of it. Try to be a little straighter there. And then, again, pay attention to the the uh, the stamp itself. Like, when you go to stamp it, that it's nice and straight on that handle. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah. I'll see you all at the next one. Bye now. Thank you.